Hey guys, Kev here, and I have another new prototype to show you. These are the version two prototypes of the Fireball design. So this is the Devo Knives Fireball. This is our collaboration with Nick Stasa over at Stasa23. I should say Nick Matasa? Mustasa? This is my favorite right here. Look at that. Black pearl, camo carbon, satin collar, black hardware. We did this new pattern on the backspacer. We added the speed holes along the back. It's a wraparound backspacer. Then you have the milled clip there. And then you have a satin, belt satin blade. Looks stunning, I think. This one's electric or blood red, but uh, in production it would be dark matter orange, I believe. Black wash, really sick. And then we have the classic one, which is the blue. Electric blue. Again, these colors are all subject to change. Could be uh, different fat carbons to make it, you know, a different blue or whatever. But yeah, these came out sick. And then we have this backspacer. This is actually a um, lefty backspacer. I'll show you how that works. I don't know if I showed this in my uh, video on the initial prototypes. Uh, we wanted to make some changes from the first prototypes and they've been made here. There's still a couple things I think we'll need to tweak. Um, but I think we could do that in production. So I'd love to hear your thoughts down below if you would want to pick one of these up. We still haven't decided on a price point whether we want to go more affordable with like 154 cm and try to make it, you know, like 150 bucks, or if we want to go S90V or something premium and, and go like 199 175 depending on, you know, I got to figure out the price with Kubi and everything. But, um, so let me know your thoughts on that. Um, let me know if you would pick one up. I mean, it's super comfortable in the hand. We uh, eliminated a point right here. So now this is a flat and it feels amazing in the hand. You have a really nice, oh yeah, really nice hollow ground blade, really cool hole shape. Um, you have this awesome pivot there. Uh, now, one of the changes we made was we added this screw because we wanted to keep this whole side clean, which we thought would be really cool. But on the first prototypes, we realized quickly that the backspacer was not flush with the scale. Um, so with these updated prototypes, we still have a little bit of that going on. Um, and I think we might add another screw, bang, just like right here to lock this down. I don't think it's very noticeable because of the it's a black screw on a black titanium backspacer. And if it helps with the fitment, I think it's worth it. You can see on this side, you get a much better fit because that clip is holding it down, right? Um, here's an example. That one's actually, I think, the best. But if you look at this one, you can see how much more raised it is down here. And I don't know if that's either Kubi cutting it wrong or it's that screw that needs to be there. Because if you look here, it looks pretty good, right? You can't see it. Um, so we'll have to work with them on that. I think that'll be an easy pre-production fix. We just have them either add the screw or, you know, fix that. Um, but other than that, I mean, I think they came out great. I would like to have a little bit more lock bar access. They were supposed to add a chamfer on the lock bar, and I think that's what's missing. It's not that the access is bad, but I think if you fidgeted with this for a while, you're thumb would start to get a little raw. You want a little bit more access there. Um, and I don't think you're in danger of like disengaging it or anything. So I think you could add a little more, especially choked up. You're not even going to feel it. So really excited about these. Um, you know, it's been a pleasure working with Nick. I love this size of knife. Um, the ergos on this knife are really, really good. Having that wraparound backspacer really makes it ultra comfortable in the hand. So let us uh, take one of these bad boys apart. I think what I'm going to do is um, 
probably hang on to this red one um, just because, I don't know, Nick has a blue one already, but I know blue's his thing, so he's probably going to want, you know, the prototype of the blue one. I would if I was him. This is the one I would want right here. This is absolute money. Um, this thing shines right here. So we'll have to see what we do. Maybe we can do the run and do like, you know, let's say we ordered 400, right? Or let's say we ordered 300 to make the math easier. We could do like 150 in this and then do 75 each of these, right? So that way we're not doing a ton of black wash because I think this one would be really popular. Um, because it's all, it's just got that tux look, but that's me personally, I don't know. Man, that's so nice. But that blue is sick on here, so. Um, so yeah, I think what I'll do is I'm gonna take apart this one real quick to show you because I just don't wanna you know, mess. Well, actually, I don't need to take it all the way apart. So here, I'll show you. I'll show you. I do it on this one. Because this is the one I would want to carry around a little bit. Um, all right. T8. T8. Well, you know what? I'll do the, I'll do the red one. I'm probably going to end up sending him all of them anyway. But so what you do is, this is the idea behind the, uh, um, backspacer and how we're making it a reversible knife now it's going to depend we have to ask them how expensive these backspacers are if they're like a couple bucks we'll just buy one for every knife and put one in the box so you could swap it if it's you know like five or ten dollars a piece then maybe we'll order a bunch and then have you guys hit us up if you're left-handed because most of you guys are not going to care right so we did ask them on this prototype to inset the clip a little more so that it doesn't have any chance to wiggle i think they did that so then you have this screw here right you have a t8 right here a little guy and then you have another one on this side oh shit that's stripping out what's going on there whoops I don't know if that was me or Jesus. I think that was maybe me, but that's not good. Sorry. All right, and then this comes out. This is titanium. It's actually a chunk there. Look at that. It's got like a rainbow effect in there. That's really cool. <laughs> From when they heated it or something. Um, so what you do is you take that off, and then you slap this one on. And this is the skeleton, so to speak. So you have two more screws under there, frame screws. Oh, are those the same? Let's see. Nope, those are T6. So take this, put that on. Man, that screw does not like me very much. Get in there. There you go, buddy. All right. Put that one in. And you have the one on this side. Might have to include a couple extra screws just in case you guys have the same issue there. Um, and then, well, I didn't tighten those on purpose because I was trying to, there we go. That one's pretty loose. And that's pulling that scale down actually quite a bit. Interesting. This one. I still think one more screw would be beneficial to the whole thing, but that's just me. Back this one out a little. So there we go. Make sure that's all lined up. Yep.
Okay. Make sure it's tight. Yeah, there's no wiggle at all. And now you have a left-handed clip fireball, right? But you don't have anything showing on this side going, oh, you know. Um, so I just realized that is going to be difficult to have that extra screw. We'd have to put it on both sides, I guess, right? I don't know. I have to look into the. I have to think about the engineering on that. Because if you have, right, this is the normal setup. If you put that screw there, right, bang, put that screw in there to lock it down. And you don't put it on this side. What happens when you reverse the clip? Right, when you reverse it, now this side doesn't have a screw, right? So, unless you could put the screw back here that matches one of these clip spots. So if you put the screw like right there, which would be what, right here. I don't know if that's gonna help you at all though with this, it probably needs to be lower down. So then you have to put one like there and there, you know, I don't know, something to think about. We'll figure all that out. Um, but yeah, there you go. Now you have a lefty setup on your fireball, which is really cool. So uh, digging that. Oh man, gotta love a beautiful belt set. And, and that hole shape, man, it really fires out. It fires out real nice. Here's where your detent catches. This is something that uh, Colin, uh, it's very important to both of us, but Colin does such a good job placing detent balls. So you'll see, that's the it. That's the travel right there. That's why we don't use detent ramps because it's very rare that you're going to get caught on that, right? If, as long as you just push the lock bar, you're clearing, right? Um, there's almost no reason for you to get stuck on that detent. You're, I mean, it's right there. You just got to get past that. So, um, yeah. All right. Let me know your thoughts on this, guys. I'm going to go ahead and get the prototypes off to uh, Stasa so he can take a look at them, give his thoughts on them, um, and we can obviously go from there. But um, I think they came out great. I think we're really close. We just have to make some final decisions, and then we can uh, work on production. So let us know your thoughts and uh we love you guys thank you so much uh, shout out to nick go check out sas 23 if you haven't checked out his channel i highly recommend it awesome dude uh and great content so let's see if i can get these to stand for this last little bit here there we go all right i love you guys peace